All right. All right, Luke chapter 10. I want to talk today quickly, ushers, you can readjust about making people a priority, making people a priority. That's our theme for this month, making people a priority. Even though this is the deacon's consecration, I want to preach something that would apply to the theme for the month and to the deacons and to the deacons. I'm trying with all my power this year to work smarter and not uh, as hard. I want to talk today about making people a priority. Luke chapter 10, verses 33 to 35. I'm reading from the King James. Follow me along. Good to see Deacon Helen back today. Amen. Wave your hand. Deacon Helen has successful surgery. And good to see you back. Good to see you back. Good to see you back. Amen. Bill, good to see you back too because he was tired. Amen. He was just tired. Every time you rang that bell, he was just tired of coming to do what you asked. Okay. But a certain Samaritan, as he journeyed, came where he was. I'm at verse 33 of Luke chapter 10. And when, when he saw him, he had compassion on him. He went to him. He bound up his wounds, pouring in oil and wine. He set him on his own beast. He brought him to an inn, and he took care of him. And on the next day, when he left, he took out two pence. He gave it to the host and said unto him, Take care of him. Whatsoever thou spendest more, when I come again, I promise you, I will repay you. And I want to talk today about making people a priority, making people a priority. I believe with all of my heart that there are three governing principles regarding how we relate to people. There are three governing principles regarding how we deal, how we relate to people. And I want to give you all three. Number one is this. What's yours is mine, and I will take it from you. What's yours is mine, and I will take it from you. Remember, I believe there are three governing principles that kind of give us the leadership in how we deal with people. Number one, what's yours is mine, and I will take it from you. Number two, what's mine is mine, and you can't have none of it. What's mine is mine, and you can't have none of it. Number one is what? What's yours is mine, and I'll take it from you. Number two is what? What's mine is mine, and you can't have none of it. And then here's number three. Here's number three. What's mine is yours, and I'll share it with you. What's mine is yours, and I will share it with you with you and today I'm focusing on our theme for the month of February making people a priority because there was a time when we used to love people and use things there was a time when we used to love people and use things the times have changed now we use people and we love things. And I want to point your attention today to a story that Jesus told in Luke chapter 10, verses 30 through 35. It's the story about the Good Samaritan. I encourage you during your time of study, your time of devotion, your moments of intimacy with God, you would read, Allison, this whole narrative. Although the story is told in Luke 10, verses 30 through 35, the story begins in verse 25 and runs, Mark, all the way down through the end of verse 37. And in a nutshell is Jesus' encounter with a lawyer. Jesus' encounter with a lawyer. Let me give you the breakdown of Luke chapter 10, verses 25 through 37. Here's the first thing that you discover, the conversation with Jesus. The conversation with Jesus. Would you make note in verses 25 through 29, Jesus has a conversation with a lawyer. Jesus has a conversation with a lawyer. And two subjects come up. The first subject comes up is eternal life. Eternal life. Eternal life. And the second subject that comes up is who is my neighbor in life? Who is my neighbor in life? When you read verses 25 through 29, those are the two subject matters that come up. Eternal life. This man wants to know, what do I need to do to have eternal life? 
And Jesus said to him, that's the question he asked Jesus in verse number 25. And Jesus said to him, what does the law say? He's talking about the first five books of the Bible. How do you read it? How do you read it? And the man said this. He says, it says, you should love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, with all thy mind, and all thy soul, and your neighbor as yourself. And Jesus says to him in the very next verse, you answered right. You answered right. Do it and live. Do it and live. Now, according to verse 25, when this man asked Jesus the question, verse 25 says he really was trying to trip up Jesus. The King James says he's testing Jesus. He's really trying to get Jesus to say something that he can hold against him. Anybody ever had a conversation with somebody and you can tell they wasn't interested in none of that stuff they asked you? All they was trying to do was trick you. Anybody ever had that conversation with your spouse and, and they just said, so where you say you was last night? <laughs> and who was that on the phone you was talking to? Come on, they really, they really was trying to trick. And Jesus says, Jesus says, Jesus says, well, you know, you read it, you read it, you read it. What does it say? He said, love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, all thy mind, all thy soul, and your neighbor as yourself. Jesus said, okay, you got it. Do this and live. And then the man comes back. And another question in verse 29. Verse 29 says, but he willing to justify himself. In other words, he, he, he trying to make himself look good. I really like to call this man Columbo because he comes to Jesus like, uh, show somebody what Columbo used to do after he would ask you a question. Come on, any TV watchers in here? TV watchers here? Come on, Columbo would always come back and say, oh, one more, one more, one more question. And that's what this man does. He comes back and says, okay, who's my neighbor? Who's my neighbor? And then secondly, verses 30 through 35, the illustration from Jesus. Jesus paints a picture. Jesus paints a picture. Now, we just finished singing about our God is awesome and our God is great. But according to verse 30 through 35, God is an excellent artist. Because Jesus paints a picture. Jesus paints a picture for this guy around the question, who is my neighbor? And that's what I want to do. That's what I want to look at for the next few minutes that are left. And then finally, let me give you the last one. The application by Jesus. The application by Jesus. The application. Now, don't miss it, Robert. Starting at verse 30, Jesus tells a story about at least four different individuals. Four different individuals. Remember, he's talking to this lawyer. And Jesus tells a story about, 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 about some robbers, some robbers. That's one. And then he tells a story about uh, the man who was robbed, the man who was attacked, who was attacked. Then he tells a story about some church people, some church people, a priest and a Levite. Then he tells a story about a Samaritan, a Samaritan. And a Samaritan was a half Jew. Jews and Samaritans didn't get along at all. Didn't get along. Now you got to get this story because look at it in verse number 30. Jesus says this in verse number 30. And I'm reading. He says, and Jesus answered him because the man wanted to know who's my neighbor. Jesus says, a certain man went down from Jerusalem to Jericho and he fell among thieves and they stripped him of his raiment. They wounded him and they left him from half dead. Now keep in mind, Jerusalem is where the Jews went to church. From Jerusalem to Jericho was a 17-mile journey. Jerusalem was on top of a hill, so whenever you left Jerusalem, you're coming down. Jerusalem is a picture of church, which means whenever you go to church, you're going up, but whenever you leave in church, you're going down. And Jericho was the hood. Jericho was the hood. And when people used to go through Jericho as Jews, they would always pray this, Lord, let me get through Jericho. <laughs> Lord, let me get through Jericho. Parents used to tell their kids who were driving, when you go through Jericho and the light is red, just keep going. Because <laughs> Jericho was a rough place. It was a rough place. Now look at verse 30. Look at verse 30. Because according to verse 30, this man didn't make it. This man didn't make it. Come on, look at the verse. It says he was stripped, he was wounded, and he was left for half dead. He was stripped, he was wounded, left for half dead. You need to know that whenever you leave in church, the devil's waiting on you. <laughs> And whenever you leave church, the devil's desire is to strip you, to wound you, and to leave you half dead. He didn't make it. Thieves jumped on him. Darren, thieves jumped on him. Because what was the mentality of these things? These thieves, what's yours is mine. Preach, Pastor. What's yours is mine, and I will take it from you. So here this man is leaving church. 
and he's been beaten. He's been beaten. Now watch the story. Verse 31. And there came down a certain priest that way. Now priests were people who gave leadership of the worship service. It says, and when he saw the man, he passed by on the other side. He's passed by on the other side. Look at verse 32. And likewise, a Levi, when he came to the same place, he looked at the man, but he passed by on the other side. So they get an opportunity to help Ed, but they don't. Because their mentality is, what's mine is mine, and I won't share it with you. Are you paying attention to what I'm saying? Come on, come on. They pass the, now, now, these are church people. These are church people. And for years, Deidre, for years I've been preaching this text and I've always thought when I preached it that both the man who got jumped on was leaving church as well as the priest and the Levite. But this morning as I was going back over it, the Holy Spirit pointed out to me, it never said that the priest and the Levite were leaving church. It just says that they're on the Jericho Road, which means they either could have been leaving church or they either could have been headed to church. The truth of the matter is, it does not really matter whether they were leaving or whether they were going. They both missed an opportunity. Which means that sometimes we miss opportunities to help people because we're too busy trying to get to church. And then sometimes we miss opportunity to help people because we're so happy after church. <laughs> they left him. They left him. They left him. They left him there. They left him there. Then look at verse 34. Or verse 33. But a certain Samaritan, as he journeyed, came where he was. And when he saw him, he had what? Compassion on him. And he bound up his wounds, pouring in oil and wine, set him on his own beast, and took him to an inn and took care of him. Because what's his mentality? What's mine is yours. And I was shared. The priest and the Levite represent church. The Samaritan represents heathens. And this verse is designed to teach us that sometimes the people you think gonna help you. won't help you and sometimes the people that you think won't help you will help you ask somebody on your road where you fall on my list where you fall where do you fall on my list watch the priest represents the pastor the priest represents the pastor and he did the least the priest represents the pastor did nothing at all the pastor the pastor of Congregational Holiness Temple <laughs> International Cathedral <laughs> Baptist Headquarters. Come on now. You didn't think I was going to say Berean Henry, did you? <laughs> Watch this. And the Levites represent deacons because they assistants and they didn't help. Can you imagine this man laying on the ground, beaten and bloody, and he sees his pastor coming? And he's probably thinking, ain't God all right? I see what that godly means now when he says he may not come when you want him. But he's, and the pastor passed him by. Then he sees some deacons coming, and he's like, these 12 just got consecrated. <laughs> I just saw them in black suits with a white shirt. I know they gonna help. And they walk by. I'm sure he laying on the ground saying, I bet I'll never tithe again. Come on, doesn't that sound like you? I'm trying to make this text live. He says, I bet I move my membership. <laughs> they can't tell me nothing. And then he sees a Samaritan. Jews and Samaritans hated one another hated one another. So what do you think is going through his mind, Sean, when he sees this Samaritan coming? Lord, mm -hmm. if I should die before I wait. <laughs> come on, come on, come on, come on. Mm -hmm. There was a teacher who asked students one day, 
what's the difference between ignorance and apathy? And the student said, I don't know and don't care. <laughs> oh, that one went over your head right there. Come on, ignorance, I don't know. <laughs> apathy. I don't care. I don't care. I thought y'all would catch that. Y'all missed that. But then some of y'all, no matter what I say, you don't laugh. You don't, you don't break emotion. You just... You know what kind of reminds me? You know what it reminds me of? You know what it reminds me of? It reminds me of this high executive that was meeting with all these people that worked for him. And he told a joke. And everybody laughed but one worker. And this executive went to this worker and he said, I noticed you didn't laugh. Why is that? And the worker said, I didn't laugh for two reasons. Number one, it wasn't funny. And number two, I resigned Thursday. <laughs> That was his way of saying, I ain't got to laugh at your stuff no more. <laughs> so let me ask you, why don't you laugh when I... <laughs> okay, okay. The priest and the Levite, they have no compassion at all. And then let me give you number three on the breakdown. The application by Jesus. 36 and 37. The application by Jesus. That's the breakdown. The application. Jesus applies this lesson. He asked this lawyer. He said, which one of these do you think was more of a neighbor? Which one do you think was more of a neighbor? And the guy said this. The one who showed mercy. And Jesus says this in verse 37. I love it. He says, go and do likewise. In other words, Jesus says, quit talking about it and be about it. Quit talking about it and be about it. Quit talking about it and be about it. Hey, I'm going to give you, I'm going to give you what the Samaritan, what the Samaritan did that the priest and the Levite didn't do because he made this man that was hurting a priority. Grab your outline. Grab your outline. I got four minutes left. Grab your outline. Number one, make people a priority by stopping for them. That's number one. This is real simple today. Real simple today. Make people a priority by stopping for them. Verse 33 says, a certain Samaritan as he journeyed, what? Came where he was. He came where he, he stopped. He stopped. He came where he stopped. Make people a priority by stopping for them. All right, here's number two. What's number one? Make people a priority by what? Number two, make people a priority by stooping to them. Stooping. Is there a difference between stopping and stooping? Come on, come on. Who, who, who can illustrate it for me? Who can illustrate it for me? Who can? Mark, show me stop. No, show me stop. Show me stop. Show me stop. Stop. Show me stoop. <laughs> yeah, that Mark is the drama king, y'all. He's a drama king. See, I have him sit right there because I know. It might mark me. Ah! He's an overachiever. Ah! do it pastor show somebody how Mark hit that stop make me think he was in the club doing the robot last night <laughs> and everybody that stops doesn't stoop but there's no way you can stoop unless you first stop don't I tell you all the time don't read the Bible you miss more than you Look at the beginning of verse 4, Dave Jones. He went to him. He went to him. Breland, where was he? He was on the ground. And he went to him. He went to him. He went to, he went to him. Hey, can I put this quick spin on it? Can I put this quick spin? Can I put this quick spin on it? The thieves represent hostility. Because they jumped on the man. Hostility. The priest represents insensitivity. I don't care. I don't care what happens. I don't care. I'm so busy ushering, I could care less about what's happening. They just told me to stand right here and to sit the people in this section. I don't care about nothing else. Insensitivity. These represent what? These represent what? Priest represents what? Watch this. The Levite represents curiosity. Because he looked at him. He looked at him. He looked at him. 
Show me, look, Mark. Show me, look. Show me. He walking and he look. Come on, you got to get up, Mark. You got to get up. You got to get up. He got his guy laying down. Yeah. <laughs> Mark got this thing, y'all. Every church needs a Mark. <laughs> Notice Mark didn't just... Show somebody how Mark did that thing. Mark about broke his neck. <laughs> Cash at me today, Mark, for using you in the message, all right? Your cred just went up, Doc. I want half of that, okay? Curiosity. Curious. Which means there's some people, all they want to know, your business. Am I preaching, Regina? All they want to know is your business. I don't care nothing about helping you. Is that you down there? Oh, okay, all right. All right. <laughs> These represent what? Priest represents what? Levites represent what? Samaritan represents flexibility. Because Harrison, he's willing to do something. Look at all what he did. Look at all what he did. Let me bring this home. Look at all what he did. Verse 34, he went to him, he bound up his wounds, put that in everyday language. He did what? He put bandages on him, which means he's traveling, Melissa, with a first aid kit. And why is he traveling with a first aid kit? Because he's on the Jericho Road. And he know anything can happen on that Jericho Road. But watch this. The first aid kit is not really for somebody else. It's for him. But he uses it. Man, y'all are helping today. <laughs> we ought to have deacon consecration every Sunday if I get to help like this. Watch this. And then he poured in oil and wine. Now, oil is for what? Oil is for what? Oil is for what? Oil is for what? Yeah, whatever y'all said, oil is for all of that. It's for healing. It's for healing. Or for washing. And then the wine. Some of it for clean, to clean him. Some of you would have given up the oil, but not the wine. <laughs> Come on, know those that labor among you. <laughs> Somebody like, you can have all the oil you want. But this Boone's farm. <laughs> I'm sorry. This man of Chevis. Give me a few more brands, deacons. <laughs> then look at what it says. He set him on his own beats. Do you see the flexibility, Dr. G? You see the flexibility, all the things that he did? Said he came in riding. He left walking. You and I would have said, listen. Geico is my insurance. And they only allow the person on the policy to drive. But if you hold on to the back of the tail, it's going to be a rough ride, but we're going to get you. <laughs> he set him on his own. Watch this. And then he brought him to an end. He brought him to an end. What do you think the end is? What do you think the end is? What do you think it is? No, it's not a hotel. <sighs> See, I was just testing you. Because some of you, you hear in and all you think about is holiday in. <laughs> Days in. Red roof in. Hotel, motel, holiday in. If your girl ain't acting up, come on. <laughs> then you take her friend to the right now. <laughs> Tell people around you, it's just my pastor. You'll get used to it. <laughs> no, you said it right. The end is like a hospital. Now watch this. Here's one important thing you got to know about ministry. A part of being effective as a deacon, as a minister, as a Christian leader, is you have to have some referrals. Did you hear what I said? I said you have to have some what? 
I didn't say reefer. I said, you have to have. <laughs> G, G, you got it. And all you're getting, get out of this Because some of y'all didn't hear it the first time. You thought I said reefer. <laughs> just for the mind, Pastor. Just for, no, no, referral. See, what hurts you and I, Shantae, is we try to do too much by ourselves. And God has surrounded us with people to help you to do what you can't do, but you got to quit trying to be Superman and Superwoman and get other people involved. He took him somewhere where he could get what the man could not give him, but he gave him enough to get him started. This church is not supposed to be everything for you, but it ought to be enough to get you started. And he took out two pence. That's money. And he said, he says, take care of him and I'm coming back and I'll repay you. Watch this. You need the ministry of referral and you need the ministry of follow up. You got to follow up with people. You got to follow. You got to fo You got to follow up with people. He says, and whatever you spend, I'll pay you back. Because here's what you need to know about helping people. It costs and it exhausts. I'm closing. Anything worth something costs and exhausts. Any, Charles, anything worth something costs and exhausts. Being married costs and exhausts. Being a leader at church costs and exhausts. Having children <laughs> costs, 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 costs. And the exhaust is the cost. <laughs> Let me give you number three. Let me give you number three. Let me give you number three. Number one, make people a priority by doing what? Number two, make people a priority by. And then number three, make people a priority by staying with them. Staying with them. He left, but he came back. But he stayed the night. Because that's what verse number 35 says on the morrow, which means he stayed the night and then he said, I'm coming back. And Jesus said to this attorney, go do likewise. Yeah. Only one person Jesus complimented in this text. It was the Samaritan. Yeah. And why did Jesus only compliment the Samaritan? Because the Samaritan reminded Jesus of himself. Give me the three things the Samaritan did. You and I was on our way to hell. And Jesus stopped. Boy, this is the deacon's day. I'm trying not to holler up in here today. And not only did Jesus stop for us, but we were in sin. We were in the gutter. We were about to bust hell wide open. And Jesus stooped. Am I preaching to anybody? Jesus had to go way low. Tell somebody I was way down there. I was way down there. Way down there. Matter of fact, when Jesus came to get you, people started saying to Jesus, how low can you go? And he stays with us. He stayed. Lift your hand. Say, thank you for staying. If we're right, if we're wrong, he stays with us. If we're up, if we're down, he stays with us. If we show up or don't show up, he stayed. Now, can I share with you one last thing that the Holy Spirit impressed upon me on Friday when I reread this text? Nowhere in the text does the Samaritan hear the man that he helped say thank you. I understand I question that. Nowhere does the man show appreciation. And I asked the Lord why. And the Lord shared this with me. Because helping people is not about whether they say thank you or not. 
We help people not so that they can say thank you. We help people because it's the right thing to do. And we help people because we got a God that when we were low, he helped us. So it's not about whether people will receive the help or whether people will thank you for the help. You help them because it's the right thing to do. Tell your whole row, I'm going to start doing better by you. I'm going to start doing better. Clap your hands for the word of God on the day. Somebody say, I liked it, that word. Man, I liked it, that man, I liked it, that. I, li I liked it, that word on today. Number one, what's yours is mine, and I'll take it from you. Yeah. Number two, what's mine is mine, and you can't have none of them. And number three, what's mine? Share it with you. And we ought to share with others because the Lord has sent so many people to share with us. To share with us. Anybody here today never accepted Christ? Anybody here today? Christ can help you to do all these things that need to be done. Christ can take you out of living life for you and start living life for others. Anybody here today don't have a church home and you feel like God is calling you to join Berean? Join Berean. Just stand across the building. Just stand. Everybody just stand across the building. Everybody. Today. Today, you feel like God is calling you to Christ, to get Christ in your life, to accept him as your personal savior. Or you feel like God is calling you. I want to be in a church like that. I want to be in a church where it's fun. I want to be in a church where I can grow. I want to be in a church where I understand. I want to be in a church where I can serve. I want to be your pastor. People around you want to be your brother and sister. I want to give you a chance to make that decision today. No fanfare, no song, no prayer, just an invitation, just an invitation, just an invitation. And today, if you feel the need to accept Christ, Lord, come into my life and change me and help me to be more like you and less like others. Or oh, I want to be a part of a church. I want to get my name on the roll. I want to be responsible and accountable to the things of God and people to train me how to use my gift and come alongside people, whether they're hurting or not. If that's you, just put your hand up. I'll send somebody to you. You don't have to walk down here. If that's you, if that's you, if that's you, if that's you, just slip your hand in there. Just lift your hand. I'll send somebody to you. You ain't got to walk down front. I'll send somebody to you, and they'll talk to you one-on-one -on -one about the things of God. All right, I need everybody in here.